Hello YouTube, Brown Ellis Tech Tips here. In this video I'm going to show you how to perform a clean install of Ubuntu Studio 1604. Ubuntu Studio is set up for a lot of different things. You can set it up for design, for software, you can set it up for graphical design, you can set it up for uh, video development, video editing, video design, uh, movies, you, you want to do your own amateur movies there's a mass amount of tools audio you name it animation it's it's pretty crazy so with that being said the LTS version all 1610 is currently out all of them are going to the installer is going to be the same from 1604 until 1704 which is where you'll see changes so 1604 is going to be the LTS and even with the fact that 1704 may come out um, the way the LTS has been working the LTS version will be the next one should be 1804 because so far it's been uh, 1204, 1404, 1604 so it, it skips an odd version and basically every other even version has been the, the major LTS so Hopefully that'll help you out some. So, well, on this particular screen, once your DVD or USB drive boots, it's going to want you to select a language, go to English, and hit enter, or <laughs> go to your language and hit enter. More appropriate. But now that we have Ubuntu Studio, you have to try Ubuntu Studio without installing. That's how you boot it into a live distro. Install Ubuntu Studio. Check this for defects. That's a good way to make sure your install works properly test memory make sure you don't have any RAM problems boot from first hard disk <clears throat> boot from first hard disk isn't going to do us any good in this particular case because well there's nothing on the hard drive we haven't installed anything yet so let's go to install Ubuntu studio and hit enter now it's going to fire up your installer finally the boot process may take a little while and usually does depending upon the system and uh, what type of media you're booting if you're booting a USB 3.0 drive plugged into a 3.0 socket you probably won't have as much of a speed problem DVDs on the other hand tend to be pretty dang slow they were top of the line back in the day until they got replaced with Blu-ray which is going to probably be replaced relatively soon as well honestly I'm really surprised software doesn't come on SD cards or copywritten USB drives and write protected Alright, and the first thing you get is the welcome page. From here, select your language and click continue. Now, as always, and as I do with every single install, select download updates while installing Ubuntu Studio and select install third party software for graphics, Wi Fi hardware, Flash MP3, and other media. The software is subject to license terms, including when it's docu with its documentation, some is proprietary. Fluendo MP3 plugin includes MP3, MPEG Layer 3 audio decoding technology license from Fraunhofer, Fraunhofer and Technicolor, whatever in the hell that IIS and SA mean. So, with that being done, click continue. Alright, now you have the install Ubuntu Studio options. So you have Ubuntu Studio Audio, Audio Core, Audio Plugins, Desktop Core, Font, Graphics, Photography Package, Publishing, and Video. So as you can see, exactly as I was saying, there are a lot of tools here and you can deselect various ones. Now you go to the video, you have Audacity, which is used for audio editing. You have Blender, which is used for 3D modeling and 3D rendering. You have Bracero for burning discs. You have Devid, FFmpeg, there's Inkscape, and there is so much to this, so, so much. So 
go to the publishing here's the tools from publishing which gives you GIMP oh you have Muses Core there's a lot of stuff on here a lot of stuff photography yeah you'll notice some of them actually have duplicated packages uh, it's more so you can zero in on what's specific for you if the only thing you're interested in is audio well by golly there's three of them right there you select all those and all your audio crap will be there you want a little bit of everything smack it all on which is what I'm gonna do you can deselect or select any of them you can expand it out deselect or select specific packages so lots and lots of options here once you get everything selected that you want click continue would you like to know more now I always and I do mean always push that you encrypt the hard drive and set it up as an LVM logical volume management on the uh, install that being said I'm not going to do that because this is a lab machine but I highly encourage you encrypt the drive and use LVM I am going to set it up to use LVM I normally would do the something else to go through the whole process however if you go to my initial Ubuntu 16.04 video you can fast forward to the part for configuring the hard drive because it's pretty much the same across the board for all of these so except for the server version which we'll get into that later when I do the server video I will actually specify on that and do the hard drive so if you want to see how to do the manual configuration on the hard drive and using something else refer back to that video and it'll walk you through configuring your hard drive and then you can go back forward and continue on from there with this <clears throat> with that being said once you get your options set and encrypt encrypting is a major security stance it helps other people from being able to easily steal your data right off of your hard drive and immediately be able to render the file if they don't know what the encryption algorithm is and it's not already decrypted in transit or anything else guess what they're gonna have a hell of a time cracking that file well as long as it's not a block cipher because they've already figured out all the block ciphers suffer from a very serious flaw of if you can cause a block collision it'll just poof give you the key decrypt it right there on the spot so let's not use those your AES encryptions and things like that are far better off uh, especially if you're pushing various linear ciphers with AES encryption so encrypting your hard drive is muy importante it's very very important so once you get your options set click install now and clicking continue or install now it's going to give the screen for how it's going to set up the hard drive that's fine click continue that is if you use erase disk and install Ubuntu Studio alright now we're at the point of selecting our time zone so you want to make sure it's on the time zone you're in usually it's pretty good about getting correct on the first guess if it doesn't well you can select wherever you want in the time zone and hopefully it gets the right area don't be surprised if your city's not in the list that's fine just put in a city that's closest to you that's in your time zone you'll be good to go once you have your time zone set or if it's already good click continue now for the keyboard layout same thing it's usually really good about selecting it. if it does not you can click detect your keyboard layout and it'll detect it you're right in the spot now all you gotta do is just click right here you can test out your keyboard once you think you got it click continue if it's right the first go around yeah you can ignore everything I said and just click continue anyway so the first thing it wants to know is who the hell are you I think everybody wants to know I mean uh, <laughs> almost all software and everything else wants to know that so you can type in your name or you can type in whatever you want to be completely honest my suggestion this is the very first user profile you create on all Ubuntu installs. I can't stress this enough. Is your admin 
So this is going to be your root or super user account. It's not really root, root, but it will be the one that you do super user administrative tasks and su do commands with. So you can either set your name or you can set it up as a different name so you can distinguish what it is. But the real kicker is, is make sure it doesn't have anything to make it look like that it's an admin account. You want it to look like a regular user account. So, since this is my lab system, we're going to go ahead and ignore all of that logic and we're just going to put in a simple stupid name because, eh, why not? And it gave it the computer name of CB Lab Virtual Machine. We're just going to shorten that shit up to VM. Now we have a username of CB Lab. Choose your password choose a strong password anything over 14 characters as long as it has uppercase lowercase number special characters you should be good however I'm gonna tell you right now I'm gonna put in a password next to my username here and this is gonna be the dumbest password any computer can crack that in seconds matter of fact it's in most rainbow tables so they don't even have to because it's already one of the guesses that it'll automatically throw out there it's also in a lot of the guess word list for the actual ones that try to do password brute forcing so simple passwords like this even though it has a special character it uses upper and lower case and it also replaces the O with zero this shit doesn't work I'm going to show you one that's actually stupid simple that you would be surprised at how difficult it is to crack. See, I can't even put that in there. I was going to put, I bet the hacker will never guess this password. It is an extremely long password. It is a stupid, long, and difficult password. And most of your password cracker utilities are not going to be able to easily break that. Believe it or not, you are better to use a phrase, a passphrase, or uh, you're actually better off to use a phrase, an entire sentence, something along those lines for a password because it is far more secure that way there is more security in length rather than quality as surprising as that may sound it's because it is that much more complex and far far harder for brute forcers rainbow tables and things like that and to have rainbow tables for uh, passwords that are like 20 to 30 characters long are insane in size we're talking hundreds of gigabytes trying to get just a majority I wouldn't even say a majority so length has a lot to do with your password security that being said again this is my lab machine so we're going to ignore all that shit for my system I don't recommend it for yours but I'm going to and that's why I get fair password Another stupid thing people do. You see that login automatically? I don't even understand why they give that as an option. That is the dumbest crap ever. We're going to set a freaking password. We're going to set it up to login automatically so you don't need it anymore. Yep. Pretty fucking stupid. Let's set the system up to log in automatically. And best of all, since you're doing it on your very first and I do mean very first profile created that's your super user, not only did you just give the freaking idiots access to everything you just gave them access to everything as god of your system duh don't do that don't use login automatically god don't use it if you decided not to encrypt your hard drive you can encrypt your home folder that will encrypt your files only in specific keep them nice and locked up and protected i would highly recommend using encrypt my home folder if you did not encrypt the entire hard drive once you get done with the installer it's going to ask you to put in a passphrase you'll put it in twice it'll encrypt it and from that point forward you'll have to use the passphrase to use any of your personal files in your folder which is just an added layer of protection so with all that being said guess what i'm not going to do as well
encrypt my home folder. This is a lab machine. After I get done with this video, it's freaking going to get deleted, so who the hell cares? Your system, I would highly recommend that, and highly recommend you don't use that. I still don't understand why the hell they include it. Dumbest crap ever, but whatever. Click continue once you have everything set up. Now it's going to go through the process of installing your files and the system. This part's going to take a little while depending upon the system. I have seen the install take as little as five minutes on some systems with high-end uh, processors, both AMD and Intel, and solid-state hard drives on, you know, the 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 tippy top connections. Uh, we're talking a high-end solid-state drive running on a uh, <clears throat> SATA three connection at the full six gigabits per second. Uh, there's some of them that can actually support terabits per second connection speeds, but the socket itself and the technology being used doesn't yet support that, so yeah. Now with that being said, we're going to let it go ahead and do the install. I'll see you all shortly. Alright, we're back and now you're ready to restart, so click restart now. After you do that, it's going to come up telling you to go ahead and remove the installed media. Just remove the USB or DVD and then hit enter and she should go ahead and restart for you. Alright, and once it boots up, it's ready for your password. Once you're fully loaded up, you'll be at your desktop, which for the most part is going to look an awful lot like GNOME because it's a lot of what it's built off of, but there are a lot of tools and applications in there now for your entertainment and development. So with that being said, this information is out there for absolutely everybody. As always, watch, like, and share. Have yourselves a great day.